Happy Merry Everything, everybody. Welcome back for another Makeup Monday for Vlogmas 2018. If this is the first time you're ever seeing one of my videos, I'm T and you're actually watching one of my Vlogmas 2018 videos. And every Monday during Vlogmas, I'm doing Makeup Monday where I talk about makeup or do a get ready with me or something, something having to do with makeup. Let's get this part out of the way because I have to say this every time, I ain't no damn guru. I am an amateur, I am just a regular degler person, I'm just some lady who enjoys makeup and occasionally puts it on my face. And in that endeavor, I like to get as good a result as I possibly can with my amateur hand, bars. And over the years, I feel like I've definitely gotten less terrible at makeup. There are a million billion ex-Mac employees turned beauty gurus here on YouTube, but these are some tips and tricks that I've never necessarily heard anyone say explicitly and that I've just settled upon as an observant person, I like to think, in my attempts to get my best possible beat. My first tip is to use less than what you think you need. And I mean of everything. And what I mean by that is to build as you go. So often I will watch videos where people are like, oh, let me try this foundation and they'll squirt out multiple pumps. Start small. I look at makeup a lot like cooking and you can always add a little bit more salt, add a little bit more salt, but once you put in too much salt, you're fucked, there's no going back. I find it far better to build bit by bit as I go and that way I don't have to worry about crossing the line and then having to start all over. Ultimately, I also go through product a lot less quickly this way because I'm only using what I need instead of squirting out a bunch of concealer or a foundation that doesn't need to be on my face or that's just going to end up drying out on my little makeup palette. My second tip is to match the undertone of your concealer to the undertone of your foundation. What I mean by that is generally you want to use a foundation that matches the undertones of your skin, but sometimes it isn't quite right. Maybe it's a little bit cooler than you are, maybe a little bit warmer. My undertones are very yellow, but I find that yellow foundations tend to be too yellow, so I sometimes use a more neutral foundation. Whichever way I'm going, if I'm going with a very yellow foundation or a very neutral one, whatever concealer I'm going to use that day, I make sure it has either a yellow undertone to go with the yellow foundation or a neutral undertone to go with my neutral foundation. Matching those undertones as closely as I can helps to create a more seamless result when I'm blending the concealer in with the foundation. Whether I'm working under my eyes or spot concealing for a blemish, it just gives a much, much, much better result. Using, say, a cool toned concealer with a warm foundation is more than likely going to draw a lot of attention to the very thing you're trying to conceal. My third tip has to do with color correctors. Now, color correctors definitely don't get talked about the way that they used to here on YouTube. They were having a moment a few years ago where everybody was talking about color cor correctors and every brand was coming out with all different kinds of color correctors. Though they don't get talked about as much as they used to, I still think that there is a place for them. If I have some very bad hyperpigmentation from an old blemish or something and a regular concealer isn't going to do it, I'm certainly going to reach for a color corrector if I need it. But the one thing I always keep in mind when doing so is that I want to match the intensity of the color corrector I'm using to the intensity of the thing I'm trying to cover. Meaning, if I've got just a little bit of hyperpigmentation, I don't want to go for the most pigmented, bright, peach orange corrector that's out there. I want to go for something that's just a little bit more subtle and a little bit less in your face. Whereas if I've got some really, really severe hyperpigmentation that's several shades darker than my normal skin tone, that's when I would want to reach for a very, very pigmented, intense color corrector that's got a lot of orange or peach pigment in it. Ultimately, if you're using a color corrector that's far too intense and pigmented for what you're trying to correct, you're going to have to do just as much work covering up that color corrector as you did to cover up the thing you were trying to conceal in the first place. My fourth tip is a weird one, but it really works, and that is to keep your eyes open as much as you possibly can when doing your eyeshadow. Now, of course, when you're getting shadow down on that lid, you're not really able to keep your eye open, but whenever I'm blending, I try to keep my eyes open and relaxed just the way they would be right now when I'm looking at you and talking to you. Because the way that you hold your eye as you're applying your makeup is going to be the way that it sits. So if I'm doing this, it's not going to be sitting properly when I actually relax my eyebrows. 
So once I've done all the work actually getting the lid work done, anything that's going to be showing, which is going to be what people see most of the times because my eyes aren't going to be, I'm not gonna be walking around with my eyes closed. Most of the work that you're doing with your eyeshadow is going to be for the part that's actually kind of surrounding your eye. And that's why I like to keep my eye open and relaxed and basically looking straight ahead as I'm blending and placing down my colors and creating my look. Avoiding blending like this when I'm going around my eye or scrunching up my face or doing weird angles has really helped me to significantly improve the result that I get in the end. And just as a mini bonus tip, I would say do the same when you are applying your blush, contour, and highlighter. Keep your face relaxed and look straight ahead as much as is reasonably possible. Of course, you'll need to turn your head to get to the sides and things like that. But what I like to do is rather than doing that really old school trick of then smiling and finding the apple of your cheek, you know where the apple of your cheek is. Just look in the mirror and place your blush when your face is relaxed, which is how it's going to sit because that's how your face is going to be most of the time that you have your makeup on. If you smile, and then you find that apple of, the, of your cheek, once you relax, your blush is down here and you look nuts. I remember learning that trick years ago from Wayne Goss, but um, I actually apply that same methodology and that same reasoning to my highlighter as well. I don't poke my face out or pull any other strange faces when I'm doing my highlighter. I really just try to look, okay, here is the top of my cheekbone, keep my face relaxed and then apply rather than trying to smile or do anything else like that. Same thing for bronzer. Next up, let's talk about concealer and a trick that I do to at least reduce the amount of creasing and gathering of product that I get. And that is, after I've applied my concealer and blended it out, but before I set it, I take a Q-tip, or I guess I should say a cotton bud, because this shit is not sponsored by Q-tip. After I have blended out my concealer, I nearly always see a little bit of gathering just in the fine lines under my eyes. It's perfectly natural and normal. So I just take a Q-tip and I basically remove the excess product. I just go under my eye and dab and roll and just get rid of that excess product. And then I go in and I set with my powder. It is the smallest thing, but I find it makes a massive difference in the appearance of my under eyes and how much better my concealer looks, how much smoother it looks, and the amount of creasing I get as the hours go by. I pretty much never skip this step when doing my makeup since I started doing it, and it is really, it, it's made such a huge difference. This next tip is for false lash wearers, and that is, if you are new to it and maybe not that good at it yet, one thing to pay very close attention to is the angle at which you're placing your lashes as you are applying them. The two basic ways to place your lashes are to have them sitting up or to have them sitting out, meaning the angle of the lash points more up to create a more open-eyed effect or out to create that more sort of sleepy, sexy Marilyn Monroe type of effect. The way you place them will also be affected by the natural curl of your eyelashes. My eyelashes are extremely curly and because I use a lash serum, they're also now very long. So they tend to curl back almost and close a loop at this point. They're very, very curly. Now I prefer my lashes to sit out, so I do have to kind of fight against the natural curl of my lashes, forcing the false lash to sit more up. Whichever you prefer, just make sure that you keep that in mind as you're placing lashes down and also as you apply the glue to your lashes because where you apply the glue can also affect how well it will stick and the angle it's going to sit at once you put it down. And whichever way you go, whether you like your lashes to sit up or out, for the love of God, just make sure they're both going the same way. You don't want one lash up up and one lash out because you will look like you should be in a straitjacket. Sticking with tips for false lashes, my next one is about concealing that band, girl. The last thing you want is a lash band snitching on you. So it's always a good idea to, after you've applied the lash, go over that band in a couple different ways you can do it. Once the lash is down and the glue has dried, simply trace over the top of that band with a liquid eyeliner or even a pencil, and that'll definitely help conceal the band so that you are not giving all your secrets away, or you can just use shadow. I like to use either a flat brush or even an eyeliner style brush and just take the darkest shadow that I have out of the palette I'm using or whichever one just makes the most sense for my look, honestly, and gently dab across the band at the top with that brush and that shadow to help mesh everything in and, and conceal the band a bit better. I do tend to prefer shadow a bit more than liquid liner simply because I don't wear liquid liner that that much because I suck at it. But the liquid liner or just the pencil once again is the quickest, easiest way to just 
run over that lash line, conceal that band and be done. One more tip for a better false lash application, and I promise this is the last one about lashes, but that is to pinch your lashes with your false lashes like your life depends on it. Once your false lash is actually dry and adhered to your eye, go ahead and pinch through either with your fingers or with tweezers. It seems small, but this step makes a world of difference in blending in your natural lashes with the falsies. And it, I mean, anytime I forget to do it, it makes such a difference in a bad way. When you really pinch those lashes together, you can create a much more seamless effect. And especially because I like to use these tweezers, which uh, kind of, they're, they're basically perfect for this purpose. I don't know if that's what they were made for, but these are great because I can really just slide them in from the side, pinch together, and I pinch them really, really well, and then I'll go in from the inside and get the other side. Uh, it makes such a difference in how my lashes look and how much more believable they look. Because of the curl of my natural lashes, it has always been a struggle for me to get false lashes on. But because of just getting better at it with practice and the tips that I've just given you guys, probably most importantly, the pinching, I've gotten compliments from actual professional makeup artists who thought that I just had lash extensions where I was wearing a strip lash. Two more tips. My second to last tip is again involving a Q-tip. And funny enough, I didn't take my own advice that I'm about to give you, but that is after you've put on your lipstick, particularly if it's a bold color like what I'm wearing right now, this is one of those limited edition Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, by the way, this is Velvet Jazz, and I love it because I love red lips anyway, and Lisa Eldridge is an icon. I digress, when I applied this lipstick, I forgot to do this critical tip and that is this. Take a Q-tip and just go around the inside of your mouth like that and that way you will avoid getting lipstick on your teeth. So if I've had lipstick on my teeth this entire video and dear God, I hope I have not, sorry about that. I was in such a rush to get filming, I completely forgot to do that today. But it's definitely a great idea because there's nothing worse than having lipstick on your teeth, except for maybe having one eyelash pointing out and the other one pointing up. The old school version of this trick is to just use your finger, but one, I don't wanna be sticking my fingers in my mouth, it's just kind of gross. Even when my hands are clean, that bothers me. And two, because my lips are still quite big, I find that that actually removes too much product. The Q-tip removes the perfect amount for me, and I much prefer to do it this way. And my last tip, which is going to sound a lot like my first tip because it kind of is the same as my first tip, but it's specific to powder and that is to use the least amount of powder you can. I realize that I am in a minority by even being a participant in Instagram and YouTube and all that and even talking about makeup and the fact that I'm not a full coverage girl. I don't want full coverage. I don't like the look of full coverage and I only reserve it for long, long shoots at on-camera gigs for work. In my real life, my makeup is caked up 0% of the time. Nonetheless, one of the main things that will make your makeup look cakey rather than simply full coverage, because it is not the same thing, is too much powder. So techniques like baking are definitely ones to be wary of because that is very easily going to get you into cake face territory. Again, you can always add more powder if you find that you're getting shiny or things didn't quite set the way you wanted them to. But if you are slapping on powder with a powder puff over, over, over more powder, over, over, over more powder, that is when you will be looking casket ready instantly. Powder is just tricky that way. It is really easy to take a very nice looking makeup from realistic and natural to overdone with too much powder, especially depending on the quality of the powder you're using. So I recommend sticking to finely milled, very, very elegantly formulated powders and using them sparingly, building them up as you feel you need to do. I think setting sprays have increased in popularity over the last several years because of the need to take down that powdery effect that we get from powders. That is it for my top 10 tips to make your makeup suck a bit less, <laughs> or at least they help me make my makeup suck a bit less. Hopefully you got some good ideas from this. And if you liked this Makeup Monday, I will make sure that I also link last week's Makeup Monday where I shared my favorite products. I mean, not necessarily my all time favorite ones because there's definitely some limited edition ones that I chose not to include because they're not available. But my favorite Charlotte Tilbury products, my, my top 
five things from her range so that if you've got some Christmas money or you're just doing some holiday shopping for yourself or you want to ask for something for Christmas from her range and you weren't really sure what to go with, perhaps you'll find that video helpful. That's gonna do it for me today. Thank you for joining me and thanks to everyone who joined me for yesterday's Sunday stream as well. Hopefully you picked up something useful or got some ideas to improve your makeup game and I will see you guys tomorrow for another Vlogmas video. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm gonna take that down. <laughs>